Have a good day. Have a good day. That was Rosie. She's working in the museum today. Now I've noticed that a lot of writing vlogs start with making making a cup of coffee to the point where it's become kind of like a cliche, I guess. But that's fine. It works, doesn't it? It's, it makes sense. It's the first thing you do in the day. It gets you going. So why not get your filming going by filming your making coffee process? Oh, look at this bee. Ah, it's waking up with a bit of morning pollen. I know how you feel, Mr. Bee. Got to get that morning nectar. Ooh. I've got to get my morning nectar. <laughs> Wait, actually, no. There's so much coffee left over from yesterday. I've been quite enjoying making iced coffees with leftover coffee, and it's easier as well because there's some left over. So yeah, I'm gonna do that. So today I've actually got um, quite a lot of freelance work to do. So I don't know how much writing I'm gonna get done, but I'll still <clears throat> get some done. I've actually got another video that I filmed yesterday for the channel, but I don't know, don't know if it'll be ready by the end of today to put out as well. Uh, that one's about my typewriter. I thought that might be quite good going on. I'll definitely do some writing today and talk a bit about it as well but today I've got to prioritize my uh, freelance work. I'm just um, having some noodles and watching the Indian moon landing, the Chandrayaan, I think that's how it's out, it's the moon landing, but like 10 meters away, I think they're about to do it. Oh there you go. <laughs> it has just gone three I've been doing freelance work since this morning. I had a little break around lunchtime. That little break that I had was lunchtime, in case that wasn't clear. So I've been doing video editing work today. And a lot of what I was doing was lots of little keyframes, like frame by frame changes of certain animations that I'm doing in the video. And that could just be very tiring. <laughs> it can make you pretty zonked out, basically. I think I'm gonna stop now. And I really like to try and do some writing. But before I do that, I think I have to get out of the house just for a little bit. It's quite nice weather, although the sun has just disappeared as I said that. So I think I'm going to go for a little little wander and just blow the cobwebs out from between my ears uh, so I can actually just do some writing. story at the moment. It's still the same scene I was talking about before. It's that Council of Elrond scene where it's a lot of talking about the plot. It's really sort of explaining what the main threat of the story is and so it involves a lot of world building basically and that's why it's quite nice to just clear my head a bit before writing more of these kind of scenes because world building is a part of writing that I can really get lost in <laughs> and uh, in a good way, you know, and it can just eat up all my sort of creative energy. So it's quite nice to refresh my mind before starting on it again, because it's a bit of a indulgence, you know, I can overindulge in it a bit, so. But at the same time, you know, there's nothing wrong with indulging a bit, is there, in the stuff you enjoy? If it gets you going and gets things moving, that's what editing's for, isn't it? If you write too much of something, you can just get rid of it. I think I better head back, actually get some stuff done. And we're back in the house. I'm kind of enjoying having something in my hand when I talk to the camera like this sort of gives me something to do, otherwise I'll be wildly gesticulating everywhere. I'm also kind of realising that it makes these parts of the videos look like, here I am now with my opinion, which is not, oh, which I guess this kind of is actually, isn't it? Yeah. Well, here I am with my opinion. I was thinking a bit more about what I was talking about in the park to do with world building and things. That's such a huge part of so many stories and so many people's writing experiences. Creating your own world is probably a really big draw for people. And probably what starts a lot of people off. I think for me, I started writing when I was a tiny kid. I remember writing stories and then printing them out and stapling them together and making books. And I wanted my name to be on the cover of a book. But a lot of that started because I imagined my own worlds, basically. And that's probably the same for a lot of writers, really. You know, whether you're writing sort of fantastical worlds or not, you know, whether your stories are set in the real world, it's still your own world, no matter what. If it's fiction, then it's entirely made up by you. But yeah, I sometimes have this voice in the back of my head when I'm writing my stories, which kind of tells me not to get too carried away with the world building side of things. And I don't know if that's a voice I should listen to or not. I can totally see myself getting carried away with world building 
and then you know having pages and pages of descriptions of a city or or the history of some place or some people or something and that's something i really enjoy doing and probably a lot of people enjoy doing but i can see myself doing that at the expense of character and the at the expense of actual story i feel like for non-writers world building can be experienced in what we call canon can't it and that's a huge point of conversation online in all kinds of fandoms and particularly i'm thinking of star wars and really star trek because i watch a lot of star trek that's my thing i love star trek but there's so many discussions and quite often very toxic discussions about what what is canon and what is not canon let's take star trek for example star trek's been going on since the 60s and since then there have been so many different series of star trek so many different movies books video games all kinds of different iterations, all set in this universe. The Star Trek universe wasn't created in one go. It wasn't like Lord of the Rings or something like that, where the world was created and then the stories were set in it. Star Trek began with the individual episodes, the individual stories, and then the world built around that to fit the story and to serve the story. And over the years, because it's become such a loved series and a universe that so many people feel really passionately about and feel like they have some sense of ownership over it. This canon, which has come about by natural world building, which has just happened on its own over the years as the episodes have gradually come out over the over the last few decades, that canon, which is built up, people are now very protective over it to the point where people completely dismiss entire new series of Star Trek. In particular, I'm thinking about Discovery, Star Trek Discovery. With Star Trek Discovery, it was set before Kirk. And so a certain aspect of the f- Star Trek fandom were saying, this is ridiculous, it looks way too futuristic, oh, Spock doesn't have a sister, you know, all all this kind of stuff. Never mind the fact that in the movie, The Final Frontier, we already found out decades ago that he had a secret brother. So, you know, it's not completely ridiculous. But yeah, the argument of certain people saying, this is not canon, in my mind is kind of weaponized world building. Maybe I'm kind of going off topic a bit here. I think The ultimate point that I'm trying to get to is that, and I can only speak for my own writing because everyone has their own processes, don't they? But I feel like when I'm writing, and in particular when I'm writing a story like I'm doing now, where the world building is actually quite important to the story, you know, it's in a completely different world. The world building should serve the story. And I think that's a really important thing to keep in mind when you're writing a story. It doesn't have to be fantasy, it doesn't have to be science fiction, anything. The story should come first. Of course, you have certain sort of outliers. You know, the obvious one is Tolkien. He created his world basically in, in its entirety before he even started writing the stories. And then he fit the stories into the world because he wanted to use the stories to explore the world more from a more personal point of view but again like I said I think that's more to do with differences in people's writing processes than it is to do with any hard and fast rule that we should all follow yeah I think that all made sense didn't it I think I'd quite like to make another video at some point I probably will make another video at some point talking about this kind of thing but yeah it was just running through my head when I was walking back and I just wanted to record my thoughts on it now I'm actually going to do some writing um (laughs) okay I've progressed a bit more on that scene. I'm glad I had to think about all that world building stuff because it's a real balance trying not to give too much away. That's another thing. I'm trying not to give too much away in this part of the story. Not a huge amount of words, word count wise. Yeah, about 700 words or so. But like I said, it's an important part of the story. So I'm trying to get it right, you know. I think we'll leave it there for this vlog. Thanks for watching everyone. Subscribe for more videos. I've got an extra video coming out either this week or next week. And that's gonna be about my typewriter, which is just here. I haven't quite finished editing that yet, so we'll see how it goes. Uh, I'm going to be doing NaNoWriMo this year, so subscribe for that. I'm going to try and do as many videos as I can, chronicling that whole process. Thanks for watching, everyone. Subscribe for more writing updates. Uh, Hit the bell as well. I always forget that one. Yeah. Bye.